here with Marty Hoffman, head coach of the University of Minnesota Morris Cougars football team, coming off a tough loss up in Duluth to St. Scholastica. Uh, coach, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, the offense up there in Duluth? Had a little trouble getting it going. Did you see some things that you can build on for this week? Yeah, certainly. Uh Anytime you go up to Duluth, it's a tough place to play. Um, you know, it's been even a while, I think, since we've ever gone up there and won. So, uh, knew the challenge going into it. Uh, obviously, talked to the players all week about, you know, the expectation is, is to go there and to play well and to win. And, you know, I felt like we started off, well, we, obviously, we started off pretty well getting an interception, you know, in our first series defensively. Um, and then, really, you know, offensively, just never really got anything going. And uh, both in the run game, pass game, they didn't do anything different that we weren't expecting. Uh, they just executed at a much higher level than we did. And, uh, um, then we really struggled trying to uh, a establish the run game, and, and really Justin was was a part of our most successful run game was was him being able to move around and, and um, you know use his legs to advantage. But you know in terms of just consistent consistently down the field, you know Justin had kind of an off day I'd say throwing the football, and that kind of hurt us a little bit. But um, you know we did have a, a stretch late or probably late in the second half there where we were able to kind of put some points on the board finally and. You know, fake a punt and, and, and recover an onside kick and, and turn that into points. Those are all good things. And then, you know, just from a defensive standpoint, uh, we, we, we just beat ourselves. I mean, it was a lot of what we did wrong, not really what they did well. Um, and, and that's disappointing because obviously at this late stage in the season, you, you, you shouldn't have those types of mistakes. But yet we had them, and, and we're trying to cover them for some of our injuries and, and just try to get guys playing some places that maybe they're not uh, overly comfortable or confident with, but at the same time, um, next guy up, we, we, we got to have somebody answer the bell in those situations, and we just haven't had that. So, so it's a tough game up there, and uh, um, you know, certainly I think there's some special team things we can build off of. Um, and we had a good day in terms of really all of our units return. KOR was probably the one that we, we kind of really examined, looked at, and said, Here we got to do a better job. But punt was good, uh, KO was good. Um, you know, we blocked three kicks, that's good. Um, you know, and then defensively, had three turnovers again, so, so that's good and uh, actually find ourselves pretty high in the country right now in terms of taking the ball. We just got to capitalize on turnovers and points, which is something that we're not doing. So um, so certain things that, that uh, we, we certainly looked at, viewed at, and grew from, but just a lot of simplicity mistakes that, that, that we got to get right. Yeah, coming into this week, we've got Greenville coming to Morris, uh, 12 o'clock start Saturday, senior day, Nate Galen. <clears throat> Had a sack again last Saturday. He's one of the all-time leaders in TFLs. And talk a little bit about what his leadership and what he's been able to do in his career here. And talk a little bit about the other seniors as well. Sure. Well, you know Nate. He's he's a real quiet guy. Um, you know, when when uh, uh, he got here, you know, just kind of looking at him, he kind of thought, you know, there's something here with this kid. And so he, he's really, you know, and really to all the seniors' credit, uh, they they've been through a lot here, and and we've had different changes in coaches and. You know, they've had, in, I guess, in theory, three different coaches here in the past four years of their time. So, you know, they, they all chose Morris uh, while we didn't have a head coach at the time, you know, which is something that is a credit to them. They, they really love this university, um, you know, chose it for the right reasons. And, uh, you know, Nate's kind of the uh, one of our top players, sir, uh, absolutely, without question. You know, like you said, being a guy in the TFL category, also – I think it's five block kicks this year, which is just unbelievable. He's cre he's creeping up on six, which would be another record for him. Um, Nate's been, you know, about everything you'd ask a a, a Cougar football player to be, and um, you know he's he's quiet. He's pretty reserved. He he leads with his actions, and and his actions for the past couple of years has been, you know, play hard. He plays with an edge, with a little bit of a chip, uh, which I think is awesome. And uh, you know some of the other seniors right that that we're going to honor here on Saturday, uh, Adam Kiefer. Uh, from the same high school as Nate, um, those guys were high school teammates, and uh, Kiefer, you know, again, has just been kind of a mainstay in, up, up front for us. You know, he's been a center, um, you know, for us and has been uh, an integral part in, in the growth and, and the direction of this program. You know, um, JT Karras is a kid for us that wide receiver-wise uh, didn't play high school football. So he's a kid from Wisconsin that kind of came here and really branched out and, and really took a leap and uh, – a credit to him and a lot of his hard work. He, he's been able to make himself into a, a, a pretty decent college football player. So, you know, we're going to certainly uh, um, miss him and, and, and certainly going to look forward to, uh, you know, his future is, is pretty bright in terms of his career and, and kind of where he's going there. Um, uh, Trent Maloney, uh, obviously a, a alumnus. Uh, there's a little bit of legacy there. Sean Maloney, his, his dad is a guy that I played with. Um, you know, Trent has been – 
just kind of a steady lunch pail kind of dude. I mean, he's he, he's the type of player that you uh, uh, you know you like to have in your football program because he doesn't complain, he doesn't whine. All he does is go to work, and uh, you know he might. For when he limits in some of his athletic ability, he just makes up for him just grinding and, and just comes to work every day and knows the defense and knows what he's supposed to do. And um, you, know, you can kind of always be 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 trustworthy, Trent, because he's going to get you know he, he's going to do his job. And uh, so obviously he's a uh, a guy that uh, inside a, that that we're certainly going to miss as well. So did I get all of them? I believe so. Okay. Uh, oh no, Steve Severson. I'm sorry, <laughs> Steve Steve, uh, wide receiver from from Brainerd is again kind of like Trent in terms of just the lunch pail guy. I mean, just comes to work, uh, you know, does what he's supposed to do. Uh, athletically, you know, might be limited in some areas, but just works his tail off and, and just does what he can. And um, you know, Steve's another one of those guys that you know we're, we're very fortunate to have a guy like him in our program too. So um, all, all five of those guys are, are are guys. It's not a it's not a large group by any means, but these are all guys that you know have really sto- stayed the course through a lot of adversity, and, and obviously you got to commend them for that. And and you know we're obviously going to be trying our dangest to to get them a W here uh, on Saturday. And Greenville's coming to town, making the long trip up. Uh, you know, offensively, I think they're second in the league in rushing. How, how do you slow down their attack from the defensive side of the ball? Yeah, it's a it's a real downhill type run game. And now they've they've, they've implemented a little bit more stretch the uh, sideline to sideline type stuff. Um, you know, it's a it's a physical back kid runs hard. Um, you know, and I know their quarterback uh, uh, went down for some injuries for whatever reason. But you know, the younger kid, but still, I mean, he he does make some bad decisions with the ball. And we got capitalized on those. But it, it, it's an attack where we got to be obviously very gap sound. We got to be responsibility sound, and uh, we got to be physical. I mean, it's, it's going to be kind of a, a throwback type of game, I think, and, and it's going to be one that uh, again, if, if we can hold up in the back end and, and and not give up big plays in the passing game, we should be okay. And then offensively, how are you going to move the ball this week against Greenville's defense? Uh, four man front. Uh, you know, they play some man coverage. They do a lot of stunts and movements up front. So hopefully, we can catch them a little bit in some of that stuff and, and really capitalize in, in, in some runs. Um, you know, really try to shorten the ball game from that standpoint, and then at the same time, um, you know, be able to take advantage of, of, of just some outside threats. Hopefully, again, we can uh, uh, effectively move the ball, convert on third downs. I mean, those have been kind of our bugaboos lately. Uh, be able to convert on third down, and then be successful down the red zone. We get down there, we need touchdowns, not field goals. And uh, you know, I think that'll be our, our 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 key really to victory. And then, obviously, from, from a special team standpoint, they do some quirky things uh, special teams wise that we got to make sure we're aware of. They go for it a lot on fourth down. Um, they try to possess the ball as much as possible. So um, defensively, we got to do a great job in that aspect. And on special teams, you know, if they do onside kick or fake punt or things like that, we got to make sure that we're sound there. Well, it should be a good one. Uh, noon start on Saturday. Come out and support the seniors' last home game here at Big Cat Stadium, last game in the year.